feeling it indeed. And if the slipper fits, wear it. And so far, VCU is wearing it extremely well. The 11 seed Rams have more than proven they belong in this tournament. They've done so with a stunning 18 point win over six seed Georgetown, and they followed that up with another 18 point win over three seed Purdue. Next up, VCU gets 10 seed Florida State. That's on Friday in their first ever Sweet 16 appearance. And VCU forward Jamie Keen Skeen is with us now to talk all about it. Jamie, uh, congratulations on making it to the Sweet 16 and welcome to ESPN First Take. Take us back to that win over Purdue. What was it like in the locker room in the moments after the win? Um, it was crazy, man. Uh, everybody jumping around, we got people cooking, doing the cooking dance, little B dance. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we was all just happy in there. Smiles, all smiles. All right, who cooks the best? Uh, I would have to say Ed Nixon. Ed Nixon's the guy. Yes, all he's right, the cooker. You'll have to get him to do it on the floor so the cameras can catch it. Now we have to see it. All right. After the win over Purdue, you said that the Boilermakers were scared during the game. What, what did you mean by that? Well, not necessarily scared. I just meant that, I mean, uh, I felt like they was out of character. Like, uh, I've never, in all the tape that I've seen them, uh, I've never seen them do any types of press. And so when they started pressing, I knew that, I mean, that they was uh, in a duress and they was like, uh, kind of like pressing for, you know, they needed some help because they were down 15 points and they needed help. So they was just... Um, doing something that they don't normally do, which is pressing. And so I, I kind of figured they was like scared a little bit. The last week and a half has been just crazy for you guys. You get in, you feel like you have to defend your bid, and then you beat a six and a three by 18 each time. Confidence level, one to 10, where are you guys? We're at a five because we don't want to be too confident because, you know, we'll have the big head and then uh, we'll end up getting beat. <laughs> so we want to stay level headed and stay level minded. And, and that's what we're doing. Interesting. OK, so you're at a five. How do you guys feel about playing that underdog role? You've clearly been that underdog throughout the tournament. I mean, well, it's not like we have a choice. I mean, we're going to always be placed as the underdog anyway because we're a mid-major. So, I mean, uh, we just got to take what we what they give us. What do you think about all of the talk that's gone on nationally about it? you shouldn't have been in the tournament in the first place and now here you guys are at the Sweet 16. Do you feel that you've more than vindicated yourself or do you feel that there's more work to be done to prove that you deserve? Um, I feel like it's more work to be done because we're not just satisfied with just making it to the Sweet 16. I mean, uh, everybody who labeled us, I mean, who said that we shouldn't be in the tournament, I mean, I guess that's their job, they're analysts, so they're, they're supposed to uh, make those type of accusations. So, I mean, I mean, it doesn't hurt us. It, it, it kind of motivates us anyway to go out and, and want to win even more. You started at Wake Forest and then transferred to VCU, so I imagine this whole run for you has been special. What has what all of this meant for you? It's, um... It's, it's big time for me because uh, leaving Wake Forest, everybody was telling me that was a dumb decision. You know, everybody was like, that. "Why would you leave Wake Forest, which is way up here, and to, to drop down to VCU?" But uh, you know, I, I had my chance to face Wake Forest this year, played them, beat them by 20, and uh, then uh, Wake Forest they uh, they didn't they won one game in ACC, you know, and we're where we're at. So I'm, I'm kind of happy I made that decision. I feel like my decision was a great decision. It's definitely worked out well for you. I love your game, but I, I read your bio and I decided that I'm an even bigger fan of you when I figured out that you said that if you could eat just one thing for the rest of your life, it would be cereal. Give me your top three cereal brands. What, what kind of guy are you when you go for that box in the morning? Uh, my first, my first cereal choice will have to be Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Oh, okay. Yes, man, I love it. Cinnamon and, Toast uh, Crunch. And then I will have to go with Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles, okay, that, that's yes. an underrated cereal, but very good. Yeah, uh, yeah, Fruity Pebbles is really good. And then I will have to go with um, Frosted Flakes. Oh, Jamie, I'm disappointed. I, I all three good choices. No uh -huh. Captain Crunch in your top three. Nah, it hurts the roof of my mouth. It's too hard. I know. That's the big knock on it. It's like chewing razor blades, but it's it's so tasteful you can just overlook it. And yeah. by, by the way, if you eat it every morning, it toughens the roof of your mouth and it doesn't hurt anymore. Well, maybe I'll start doing that. Mix in one bowl of Captain Crunch a week, and I think uh -huh. you'll find that you, you, that's all you need. Okay, I might start. Do, I might do that. All right. Well, it, Jamie, listen, congratulations to you and all the fine folks at VCU. A lot of folks are pulling for you as the underdog. Good luck against Florida State Friday night in San Antonio. Thank you, sir. You bet. Now back to the debate desk. More first down. <laughs>